<sighs> Hi, everyone. Oh, I just woke up from a pretty epic jet lagged nap and I am that specific kind of tired where I just don't want to do anything. I had, I've been reading a book that I like and I've had a lot of trouble focusing. I can't watch, I'm trying to watch Heartstopper. I'm finding myself fast forwarding, which is difficult to do. I have Apple TV and the remote. It's difficult to click, so it's like not, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I shouldn't even be fast forwarding because I love the show, but I'm just so, like my attention span is So I decided I need to perform. I need to force myself to focus for the sake of a video. And I was thinking also with watching Heartstopper, I need to get back into finishing The Summer I Turned Pretty, which I have not read the books, if you can tell from the title. I really enjoyed the first season and the second season though, I'm kind of like, what's going on? Like just a disclaimer, first of all, I generally don't like like contemporary young adult romances that's kind of never been my genre and I just also don't like the trope of like fighting over brothers looking at you inheritance games it's just also never been my thing however I am so intrigued I need to know what is going on apparently a lot of things have changed not a lot but like quite a few things have changed from the book to the TV series. Apparently it's being a little bit stretched out. Jenny Han, the author, has mentioned, because she's insane, that the love interest might be different than how it ends in her books. So this is just going to be spoilery for the book series. It potentially isn't spoilery for season three, which I think is unhinged. <laughs> of Jenny to do. But yeah, all three of the books are on Kindle Unlimited. I'm going to start reading them. I think that this will help me focus because I'm having trouble just, I guess, like sitting quietly by myself and consuming content. But with these kind of videos, I am reading and reacting at the same time. And it's kind of like I'm having a com well, it is like I'm having a conversation with a friend, just a little delayed. You're a little slow guys. But yeah, I think hopefully this will help me get in the swing of things. If you've ever wanted to start booktube, just do these kind of vlogs. If you have like difficulty concentrating or something, this might be an interesting way to see if it works for you, see if it helps. Um, and it's just fun to record how you react to things. I enjoy watching certain things over. Um, it's a good way. It's genuinely helped me remember the plots of books more. You guys know that's a personal problem of mine. <clears throat> Nice long intro, but yeah, I'm going to start. I have all three of them already downloaded. Mm -hmm. And how long, how long are these? Oh my God, they're less than 300 pages. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna breeze through these, I think. Um, today is Friday. Happy September, September 1st. Yeah, let's read it. So if you haven't watched the show, um, I do recommend it, at least the first season. I thought it was very beautifully shot. I thought it was well done. I thought that, again, I love books that let teens be teens and they don't have to act like these mature adults just because they're dealing with mature things. So I did really like that. I think the second one, just for me, there's a lot of time jumping and I'm, I'm not really believing a certain storyline, but I have heard that her brother and best friend are not big in the book, but they're the sole reason why I am still continuing watching season two. Yeah, I'm going to, um, it will be interesting just to see how it's different, but yeah, so full spoiler warning, this will be a reaction to books one through three, the full trilogy of the summer. I turned pretty, let's go. Okay, so update. Yes, I do have a claw that I can read my Kindle with. <laughs> anyway, just finished chapter one and it's exactly like the show. This is my first time reading Jenny Han. I didn't read um, To All the Boys, that whole thing either. Her writing style is really short. It's in Belly's POV. It's very descriptive, but in a way that the sentences are just very short and matter of fact, like the air smells like salt. Conrad's hair is dark, 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 dark. 
He's unattainable, unavailable. I can see why these books are so short is because she's able to like give you all the information. Like what, wait, hold on, <laughs> where am I? I'm on page 10 and I have already gotten the lay of the land I know what's going on, okay? So yes, we have her brother, Steven, her mom, um, who is divorced from her father, and Belly, Isabel, are driving up to Cousins Beach, which is somewhere I think in Massachusetts, whatever. But they go every single summer and they live with her mom's childhood best friend, Susanna, who they call Beck, which I never put that together, that her married name is Susanna Fisher, but they call her Beck. I like never questioned it, but that's her maiden name. So they go and they live with Belly's mom's childhood best friend and her two boys, Conrad and Jeremiah. What is a little bit different, or maybe I'm misremembering, I kind of thought that the romantic feelings Belly had, the little crush that she had was sort of a secret a little bit, but it seems like that is just very out in the open. Steven and her mom know that Belly has a big old crush on Conrad, who is the moody, dark, older, mysterious brother who plays football, but he likes to be alone and play his guitar and read books. And then there is Jeremiah, who's the younger brother. He is blonde, just so charming and full of life and full of joy and wonderful. So while they're driving there, the mom and Steven ask Belly, do you still have a crush on Conrad? Which is weird. But then Belly's mom is like, but wait, I thought last summer something happened between you and Jeremiah. And Belly was like, no, 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 you misunderstand. But in the TV show, from what I remember, I kind of felt like there was only friendship vibes between her and Jeremiah from the beginning, which is what made the switch a little odd to me or like a little sudden but um apparently there might have been a hint of something already with jeremiah um but anyway they arrive at the house she gets out of the car and the boys look at her for the first time like she's a real girl because she um switched to contacts <laughs> and chapter two is a flashback um very very similar to how the tv show is structured yeah i'm going to continue and give you give you an update when i have something to say and i forgot to mention that the moms um since belly was born have talked about how great it would be and how it's destiny that she will end up marrying one of susanna's boys which like i know is especially like maybe a generation ago was like a very parenty joke to make but like that's a thing in the book and then what was my one oh and then um the first flashback that i'm reading right now is interesting because it actually took place i think in the second season so the series is a little bit shuffled um and i wonder how that's going to affect the storytelling like the first flashback we get is the conrad boardwalk playing a game in order to flirt with a girl flashback do you know that what i'm talking about that one that's like page 12 of the first book which am i misremembering wasn't that in the second season it's all a blur but anyway sorry going back to reading now i'm working on fixing my circulation i have restless legs <laughs> hi hello um so i have some laundry to do so i figured i would catch you guys up what has been happening things that are different in case you haven't watched the show um it's really just a slice of life of this one particular summer with a lot of flashbacks to the previous summer i think that as the books continue we get more of like a plot moving forward if that makes sense versus like this kind of very slow moving plot and constant flashbacks. Currently, we are at the house with the boys. Their mom has breast cancer or is, it hasn't fully been discussed, but it seems that she has like gone through chemo and her hair is back and she's in recovery. She had breast cancer. That was a real kind of bonding moment for Jeremiah and Belly. So actually in the book, there has been more 
I feel like there have been more instances with Jeremiah than there have been with Conrad. Similar to in the movie, Jeremiah's the only one who treats her like a friend. Steven, her older brother, obviously treats her like an annoying little sister. Conrad is just kind of weird, honestly, like even in the show. And like, don't come for me, please, because I still think that we're gonna end up with Conrad. But yeah, now we're just in this one particular summer where she suddenly feels like she is pretty. And I will say though, we're getting flashbacks to like when her best friend Taylor comes for a week one summer when they were 14. I kind of felt it in the first season, but Belly's really kind of mean. Like they're not, it's one of those teen girl friendships that is sort of like competitive and not super nice. So I feel like because we're in Belly's head more in the book, obviously, than we are in the um, TV show, it's much more obvious. Like her inner thoughts are a lot kind of meaner. <laughs> and like she's acting like a 14 year old girl or a 16 year old girl, depending on what timeline we're in. I can be like, wow, this girl is obnoxious, but I was also obnoxious at that age. So like, who am I to judge? Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a lot of being concerned with your looks and your weight and always comparing yourself to others and putting people's worth in how they look. I mean, like I said, it's a reflection of the time that you are living in. I think when you are especially going through puberty, because she talks about that a lot, like how her body's changing, you're just because you're thinking so much about your body, you inevitably think about other people's bodies. So it's, you know, it's realistic. But I also feel like the scenes go really fast. Or maybe, I don't know how to describe it, but it just feels like this is a lot faster moving, but also nothing has happened because it's very much just summer vibes. So currently what has happened is Jeremiah is teaching her how to drive stick. Conrad refuses to join in with anything that they're doing. He just sits in his room and plays guitar. He has quit football, nobody knows why. Steven is going to be taken away um, by their dad to go look at colleges. And that's the thing that's different is that their dad is gets a lot more like page time than in the book in the in than in the TV show. In the TV show he just kind of shows up for a day, like a party, and brings his young girlfriend and it's just kind of weird. Um, but he's like whatever, like him and the mom get along, it's fine. But in the book he's definitely like not deadbeat, but like he they hate going to stay with him at his apartment, like they hate the divorce. That's that's all that's been really happening. It has stayed very, very true to the show. So, and it's basically just like they're swimming and having awkward conversations and picking on each other as friends and brothers and sisters do. So there's not much to report plot wise. Yeah, they went to the movies and Steven didn't want to see it. So it was just her and Jeremiah. And she had a moment of like, is Jeremiah Fisher gonna kiss me? And then that was it. Like it's because the plot is jumping so much, it, it's hard for me to tell you like what is actually happening in this summer versus the summer she was 14 or the summer she was 12. I'll update you when there's like actual plot. How about that? That might be in the beginning of the second book. I don't know. That's my 30% update. <laughs> okay, page 100. Now that Steven has left to go on his college tour, we get kind of the thesis statement <laughs> of the novel. This is the last summer that everything is going to be as it was, um, as they are kids. So yeah, this is the summer to take risks, to make it count. Here we go. Updates for you. Creepy gas station guy who in the very first five minutes of the show invites Belly to his bonfire and he's way too old to be inviting a teenager to a bonfire. He is replaced by just like a creepy neighbor who's 18. And so she goes to the bonfire and it's pretty much exactly like it is in the show. Um, she ends up meeting this guy, Cam, who 
they've kind of met because they both study Latin and they did this like Latin competition. So they met each other there and they really hit it off. Cam wants to leave early and she's like, yeah, actually I'm, you're the only person I want to talk to here because Jeremiah and Conrad have just like zipped. They're gone. They're talking to other girls. We do get introduced to Nicole, who I'm pretty sure is only ever called the girl with the Red Sox hat, but she never has the arc that Nicole does in the TV show. She is just the kind of cling on to Conrad girl that Belly hates and thinks is stupid and is not a character. She's in like two scenes. Versus in the TV show, Nicole kind of becomes Belly's mentor, Belly's friend. She's kind of the wise, mature, but still really fun character. I really liked her character. So it's a bummer that the only characters that really exist in this book are Conrad, Cam, Jeremiah, Belly, and Steven, and Taylor. And that's it. Um, so she's like, yeah, I'll, if, if you're willing, like you can drop me off at my house. And she goes to tell Conrad that she's leaving and he blows up and is like, you aren't leaving with a boy you don't know. And it just gets really ugly. And so this is kind of the start of this tension of like, why is Conrad so hard on her, treating her like a little sister, but could he be treating her like this because of another reason, you know? Um, I will still stand by the fact that this is much just like choppier writing than I would have imagined thinking like based on how I don't know I guess like because I saw it in tv form perhaps but like I'm not feeling like I'm in any of the scene like it's not super descriptive it's kind of this bare bones style of like I saw a boy he introduced it like that night I slept in Cam's hoodie it was stupid and kind of sappy but I didn't care and the next day I wore it outside even though it was blazing hot out I loved how the sleeves were frayed the way it felt lived in it felt like a boy's. Cam was the first boy to pay attention to me like that, to be upfront about the fact that he actually wanted to hang out with me and not be like embarrassed about it. Like, I don't know how to quite explain it. I don't, mm, you know, I'm, I'm because I've watched the TV show, I'm okay with it because I can picture all the scenes really easily. But if I had just read this as a normal book, it's kind of not, I mean, I'm 40% of the way through and I kind of don't like other than Jeremiah, I really don't like any of the characters and I don't feel like I know any of them other than how Belly just doesn't seem to like herself or her friends. <laughs> I've got it. You know what this feels like? It reads like Isabel's Belly's diary. Like if I were a 15 year old writing down what happened in my day over summer, I would write exactly like this. Like this is chapter 23. Cam called again the next night and the night after that. We talked on the phone twice before we met up for like four or five hours at a time. When we talked, I lay on one of those lounge chairs on the porch and stared up at the moon with my toes pointing towards the sky. I laughed so hard that Jeremiah yelled out his window for me to keep it down. We talked about everything and I loved it, but the whole time I wondered when he was going to ask to see me again. He didn't. Right? Like, doesn't that just feel like a, like a diary entry? So I can understand maybe now why certain people would like it. I just personally like a little bit more descriptive writing perhaps. I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, I can see the appeal because it is very much just like you're getting, you're getting the goss, you know? Ooh, okay, hi, 77% of the way through and so much just happened. So first of all, the whole first season of the TV show revolves around the idea of Belly joining the Debs. She's gonna debut she's a debutante at the country club none of that is in here so literally take out everything that happens in the first season that revolves the debs and you got the first book so it it feels very empty like nothing has really happened you get all of those other scenes that i thought of as like side scenes like the very specific scene of her and cam sitting at the beach eating avocado and sprout sandwiches was in there but yeah so basically cam is like listen it seems like you're still interested in conrad i'm not interested in being the third wheel and also he wasn't interested in like getting really physical and belly really wanted to and so she was really frustrated with him and so they are not talking anymore jeremiah out of the fucking blue just 
confesses his love to Belly and she's like, ooh, sorry, I still like Conrad. So she goes and she tells Conrad that she's loved him since she was 10. And he's like, mm, sorry, like, don't like you like that. You're not the one. And she throws this kind of temper tantrum and she is kind of like this in the TV show, but she is really immature and self-centered. Again, we all were at that age, but it's just kind of annoying to read, especially because again, I, I feel nothing for these characters. Like the TV show did a really good job of fleshing out, maybe not all the characters, but a lot of them, I like felt for them and loved them. But here, I feel like I don't know anyone the moms are always like not around hanging out by themselves so I don't feel that like intense love I felt not in I guess I didn't really love them they were sort of annoying but like I felt like I wanted to know their stories and I was rooting for them but here like the mom again because it's through B only Belly's POV the mom just seems so annoying and we just found out that Susanna's cancer has come back and the boys knew I guess Jeremiah also knew. In the TV show, it was a big thing that like only Conrad knew and he was keeping it a secret and that's why he was so moody. And then when Jeremiah found out, he was really upset that Conrad didn't tell him. And then Belly was upset because she was the last to know. But now it seems like maybe they both know. But again, because it's only Belly's POV, we, I'm, I'm lost, I'm not really sure. But anyway, we found out that she, her cancer has come back and it's aggressive and um, it doesn't look good. There's only 40 pages left, so. I will check in at the end but yeah if you've seen the show take out the debutante stuff which is like 70% of the plot and that's your book try to imagine that I'm not I'm, I'm not committed to this story whatsoever talk to you soon Okay, the book ends with Susanna telling everybody like, yeah, I'm gonna do basic treatment, but I'm not doing chemo anymore. That's my plan. And everyone's like, okay, but it's also not okay. Belly and the boys have one last swim where they make a whirlpool in the pool and it's childish, nice, memory and then we cut to the last chapter which is just two pages or so but it's the scene that is shown in season two where conrad shows up at belly's house not the beach house during christmas and drove five hours from boston being like i just i just really need to see you can you come out and she jumps into his car end of book so now on to book two it's not summer without you. This says it's 300 pages. Ooh, and the font is much smaller. I'm gonna have to change this, my poor eyes. Um, off I go. A new day, a dirty mirror. Uh, we're on book two and I have read the first chapter. This is where you should leave if you don't want any spoilers. I don't know why you're here. So Susanna does pass away um from cancer belly is really torn up about this obviously Susanna was like her second mom they are not going to cousins for this summer um it's been about two months since Susanna has passed away and it is now the beginning of summer next year belly and her family are not going to cousins we don't know if Conrad and Jeremiah are we don't know anything but she says something at the end of the first chapter where Taylor is trying to get her to like forget about Conrad and move on and she says if I forgot Conrad if I evicted him from my heart pretended like he was never there it would be like doing those things to Susanna and that I couldn't do so if you get rid of your crush on a guy who has not treated you special or nice other than like vaguely sticking up for you when your brother teases you if you forget him you're somehow erasing your second mom from your heart no uh-uh i just really don't like belly in this and if i think about it in the tv show i kind of don't love belly either but she's much better in the show in this just because we don't it's in her POV and we don't like I don't see why either of these boys are worth it like low-key I'm uh, in the book I'm team Jeremiah so far because Conrad has given us nothing but yeah I'm just sort of like not loving any of the characters like Steven and the mom are non-existent Taylor is really annoying and shallow I don't know man so I'm gonna try and power through this and let you know what happens I haven't finished second season of 
the show um but I finished I've watched most of it but here we go I'm being annoying but like I just expected more from a book that has such a big following I just kind of expected something else with the writing style uh. okay 20% update we have another POV and you want to know whose it is it's Jeremiah's. I have no concept of who Conrad is. And we get so much Jeremiah, like I'm confused. So basically at the end of the first book, very similar to the end of the first season, Conrad and Belly kiss. In the show, it's very much like a, oh my God, they both wanted this. We're so happy we're over the moon kind of vibe, but at the end of the book, it was more like, oh, this happened. And this is also very sad. It was like a very sad moment. I think Belly was like comforting him. I don't remember what it was, but it, was, it wasn't like they weren't giggling. It was just sort of like, okay, no turning back from this, right? And then the book ends. So it's just, it's still weird vibes. Like I don't think I've seen a scene where Conrad has necessarily been like a jolly guy versus in the, in the show we get some laughs. Like he's not jolly but he like giggles sometimes. We're doing that flashback thing that we do in the TV show as well but what we know is that Conrad waited a good three weeks um, to start calling Belly and then they had a lot of phone conversations. Occasionally he would drive down and see her but whenever he was there, Stephen always tagged around, so it like wasn't really romantic. And then she alludes to that one perfect night in December, which we haven't gotten an explanation for yet. But if you watch the show, you might know. I don't know, it could be different. But now Conrad is missing. So his mom passed away at the funeral. He had already broken up with Belly at this point but they got in a really big fight and yelled at each other and said hurtful things. They haven't spoken for a while. And then Jeremiah calls Belly to be like, Conrad's missing, can you help me find him? So then we start getting Jeremiah POVs and he's basically like, he walks us through when he started getting feelings for Belly and it's just like adorable. And in the TV show, I feel like he just always saw her as a friend and then suddenly was like, well, hey there. But in this, it's, it's, he's like freaked out by his feelings um, because he loves her as a friend so much and stuff. Like, I don't know, it's, it's very endearing. And once again, we've gotten like nothing from Conrad. So I'm just very confused, but um, basically Belly lies to her mom and says she's gonna stay with Taylor for a little bit, do a little sleepover because she's had a traumatic breakup, which she has not had. Um, and she's gonna go help Jeremiah find Conrad. So yeah, we're... Mm, mm. Like just every scene with Conrad is him being a pain in the ass and every scene with Jer uh, Jeremiah is like him lightening the mood and everyone is at ease and happy versus everyone feels like shit when Conrad's around. What's going on? Like, come on, come on. At least in the show, he gives some kind of excuse about like scheduling difficulties, but he's just straight up like, nah, don't want to. Can't you just go with your friends? Dick. I'm sorry, I just really don't feel like going. Like, come on. And then he only agrees to go once she says like, I'll go with someone else. And then he's like, jelly. Mm. And then when he gets to prom, he doesn't even remember who the fuck Corey is. The whole reason why he was like, mur, 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 I'll go to prom with you because I don't want you going with another boy. Ugh. Breezing through this book, 50% update. This is a short book. I'm only on page 158, I think. Okay, so what happened with Conrad in December? They went to Cousins and they just made out. And they talked about maybe hooking up and then Belly was like, I've never done this before. And he was like, okay, let me drive you home. Unlike the TV show. And once again, we're just continuously getting Jeremiah POV. And it's all just like how he would treat Belly so much better. He cares about Belly so much more. Like we know that Conrad is going through shit, but like Jeremiah and Conrad are going through the same thing. 
And granted, like, yes, everybody deals with things differently, but it's just like, if this is a story about essentially about which brother is a better romantic partner because at the end of the day that's what this story is about conrad has no points in his favor and just like the tv show when they go to prom he doesn't give a shit he forgets her corsage everything meanwhile jeremiah goes to like five proms so they're like overcompensating like conrad goes low low and Jeremiah kind of goes high high but yeah it's just it's just so interesting that I would never have expected this from the tv show I wouldn't have expected so much Jeremiah POV and no Conrad POV um and what else yeah it's just I mean I think we were all kind of like this when we were s now she's 17 so I don't know if I was like this when I was 17 she feels very young for a 17 year old but she is so... Taylor is her only female friend and she barely likes Taylor. But anytime another girl is mentioned, she compares how pretty they are and hates them. Like, hates them. <laughs> and it's just hard to read. I don't know. And, it, and once again, like, Steven isn't present. We literally just found out that the reason Conrad ran away and he ran away to Cousins is because his dad is working on selling the house. So in the TV show, we get kind of like with the debutante ball, a whole different storyline of Susanna's sister owning the house and trying to sell it. But this, it's just the dad. I don't know. And Jeremiah is being like so nice and so patient with Conrad and Conrad is just being an asshole and like not talking to Belly. Like the second Belly comes in the room, he leaves. So anyway, we're at, like I said, 51%. Um, I'm gonna go get dinner with Kurt in a little bit, but <clears throat> so I might not finish this today, but let me know your thoughts, like timestamp it down below um, and let me know what you think at this point of the plot. Like I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted. All right. Okay, this is weird. So uh, the father is selling the house and he's like, I'm going to sell the house and then that money is going to go to you boys and that will be like your inheritance or whatever versus in the TV show, like I said, it's the aunt, it's Susanna's sister who is selling it. So it would be so fucking easy for the dad to just be like, you're right, Conrad, we should just keep the house and you guys can sell it later because real estate always goes up. It's a fucking beach house in like a very high class area. Why would you not just keep the house if they don't need the money right now? It it just doesn't make sense. I'm, I hate it when plots just don't make sense. I'm just really bored. Hi. Book two, finished. Once again, erase any of the interesting stuff that happens in the second season of the TV show where we have this whole dynamic of the aunt trying to sell the house, Conrad and Jeremiah's cousin shows up and that's a whole thing. We have Steven and Taylor maybe being a thing. Cam Cameron makes a cameo. There are so many other characters um, erase that, erase it. Instead, Mr. Fisher, the father, is selling the house and how the TV show goes, it's like the first or second episode, we get the Conrad is missing phone call. We go up to Cousins and then from the time of them realizing that the house is going to be sold, it's literally eight episodes before we come to some kind of conclusion and it's like three or four episodes before we get a party. In this book, it's literally like Conrad is missing. They go to Cousins. They find out that the house is being sold. That night, they decide to throw a party. At the party, Belly gets drunk and then calls her mom and is like, come get me. I don't even know why. She tried to go swimming drunk and Conrad said no and pulled her out of the water because that's unsafe. There wasn't a moment. There was supposed to be a moment, but he didn't pull, like try to pull anything because she's a 17 year old drunk girl, maybe, I don't know. Um, but so she calls her mom like, meh, 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 we're in cousins, come get me. And then 
the next morning her mom shows up calls the father to come to the house makes him breakfast and is like you listen here mr fisher you're not gonna sell this house and he's like you're right i'm not as long as conrad goes back to school and takes his summer school exams all will be well great so belly and jeremiah drive conrad back to brown he takes his exams. He seems to be passing them all. When he goes in to take his last exam, Jeremiah suddenly kisses Belly. They're making out. Conrad comes out of the classroom and is like, oh shit, that's gross. I don't want to see that. Yells at Belly, makes Belly give him the necklace that she stole from his dorm room. He never gave it to her, but he's like, give you that back. And then they try to drive back home to drop Belly off. They get caught in a storm, so they pull off and they stay at a motel. When Jeremiah falls asleep, Conrad is like, I'm sorry I said those things to you when I said I didn't wanna be with you, cause he yelled that at her. I didn't mean it. And then they all go to sleep, they wake up. Conrad doesn't say anything about the whole like, I didn't mean it, I still want you thing he said last night. So Belly's like, I guess we're over. And they drive home. These characters are giving me nothing. Thing. They are so shallow. I could let her get away with certain things, but in this book, she just feels so immature. Like she seems like a baby and when, I don't know. So anyway, I'm gonna start the third book. It got spoiled for me. I made the mistake of posting about it on my stories saying, I'm currently reading the book and wow, it's really different from the show. And then people told me a big ass spoiler for the third book. So like, don't do that. Don't message people your thoughts on a book with really specific scenes. But I've also heard, like I said in the beginning of this video, Jenny is has teased that the entire plot is going to change, which it already has because of how much she added. Steven, oh my God, Steven is just like, his only goal in life, he worships Conrad and then he's working at Best Buy so that he can buy a big screen TV for his dorm room. Like that's the depth of Steven. That's him at his deepest moment is he wants to buy a 55 inch TV for his dorm room. So he works at Best Buy. Taylor's deepest moment is she's basically, honestly, I'm on her side, not completely how she handles it, but she's like, I have had to put up with so much Conrad BS. Like he is not good for you. You need to drop this shit like this is a toxic cycle that you are in which i agree i will cut belly slack though as her like second mom just passed away so but um th that is steven and taylor that is the most that they are in this steven is not in this book like at all the mom is also like not in the book she slaps belly across the face so there's that. And yeah, there's like, there are no side characters. It's literally just Conrad, Jeremiah, and Belly. And then there's like occasionally scenes where the mom comes in and is like, you know? Oh, but anyway, so Jenny, it, sorry, I'm so sidetracked. Um, Jenny has mentioned that she's going off the rails and um, I don't know if it's confirmed, but I have heard a rumor of a fourth season. And she has, again, like I said, hinted that the couple that walks away from this trilogy might not be the same as the couple in the TV show. And the epilogue of book two mentioned like Belly, it's like a couple years later and it's very vague, but it has Belly running in a white dress. And then I saw spoilers of like, oh my God, are we gonna get the Belly in a wedding dress scene? Um, If this ends with her ending up with either of these boys, I'm so mad. Like she needs to get away from these boys mature see the fucking world make friends that she actually likes i'm just so tired of there's really only three characters in this book i'm so tired of all of them why is this boy who is in college so weirdly hung up on this 17 year old girl here we go let's go apparently there's a little bit of a time jump now we are in the she's taking her finals her last final for her freshman year at university and i think she's going to the same university as jeremiah and whatever is going on between her and jeremiah he like hangs out in her bed and kisses her head so i think it's safe to assume that they're dating my girl 
Skipping meals. Oh, okay, sorry, duh. Answers on the next page. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, so the spoiler that I got has just been on page 16, has just been shown. So they've been dating since the end of senior year. So it's been about a year. And apparently Jeremiah went on some like spring break or something trip to Cabo. He's in a frat because of course he is. And the head of the, their like sister sorority is this really hot girl named Lacey, who's actually really cool and seems to have a big crush on Jeremiah. They're at a party and Belly was trying to go use the bathroom and she heard these girls talking about hooking up with this guy and oh my God, he's so hot, blah, 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 um, from these other girls who were in the bathroom. And it was Lacey and she was clearly talking about hooking up with Jeremiah. And uh-oh. Oh, yo, 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 yo. This is my least favorite thing of all the like, it just happened. I was reading, no spoilers, but I was reading a fantasy book recently where this was a huge thing of like, this guy's so in love with his true love, but then he has sex with this girl like five times and he's like, it just happened every time. Worst trope ever, worst behavior. Ugh. Oh, oh, nope, 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 this book is bullshit this is stupid this book is so dumb so <sighs> catching you up jeremiah cheated on her she is like give me some space i don't want to talk to you so sure enough he gives her some space and then she calls jeremiah and is like you know what like let's talk this out like we have a history let's talk this out she opens the door and she was like, I knew that I missed him, but the second I opened the door and saw his face again, all the hurt came rushing back. She's like, come into my dorm room. We sit on my bed, our backs against the wall, our, leg, our legs hanging off the edge. I said, how would I know that you wouldn't do it again? How would I be able to trust that? He got up. For a second, I thought he was leaving and my heart nearly stopped. But then he got down on one knee right in front of me. Very softly, he said, you could marry me. She's 18, he's 19. They've just had, they've been dating for a year, just had their first like massive fight. Like they had a fight where they broke up briefly, but this is like a, a big deal. She clearly has not gotten over the fact that you just had sex with another girl, okay? At first I wasn't sure I'd heard him right, but then he said it again, this time louder, marry me. He reached into his jeans pocket and pulled out a ring, a silver ring with a little diamond in the center. This would just be for starters until I could afford to pay for a ring myself with my money, not my dad's. I love you so much. These past couple of days have been hell for me without you. I'm so sorry for hurting you. What I did was unforgivable. I know that I hurt us and I'm gonna have to work really hard to get you to trust me again. I'll do whatever it takes if you let me. Would you be willing to let me try? We'll get an apartment off campus. I'll do the laundry. I'll learn how to cook stuff other than ramen and cereal. Holy shit. They like look at each other for a really long time. And then he's finally like, Isabel Conklin, will you marry me? In as serious a voice as I've ever heard him use. Yes, I'll marry you, I said. He put his arm around me and we held on to each other, clinging like we were each other's safe harbor. All I could think of was, if we just got through this storm, we'll make it. He made mistakes, I had to but we loved each other and that was what mattered. What the fuck? Also, she mentioned like, oh yeah, Jeremiah cheated on me, but also like even while we're dating, I, I still like constantly think about how I still love Conrad. Gah! This is gross, like meet other people. I hate this, I'm 20% through. <sighs> Thank you, Taylor. Ugh. 30% of the last book, we finally get a Conrad POV. And we're still doing this like really stilted writing style. Uh, anyway, they're meeting at the house in order to, in, in Cousins, like the, all the families are coming, like Conrad's supposed to be there. He might not show up. Obviously, Jeremiah, Belly, Stephen, Belly's mom and dad, and then Mr. Fisher happen to all be meeting at Cousins and they're gonna break the news that they're engaged. Ugh, another Conrad POV. 
And it's all gonna boil down to Conrad stopped pursuing Belly because Susanna made him promise to take care of his little brother and he saw that move as being a take care of Jeremy thing. Uh, I'm at 44%. We're still just having everybody be pissed about the fact that they're engaged because they're 18 and they're 19 and they have no money. Belly keeps calling herself a big girl. I feel like if you call yourself a big girl unironically, you are too young or just immature, not even young, but like immature to be getting married to the man who cheated on you like a couple months ago. Red flag, red flag. Okay, so basically, uh, here we go, catching you up. Uh, for some reason, Belly is staying at Cousins, the beach house for a while because like it's uncomfortable at home because her mom has basically said, I'm not coming to the wedding. And she had to move out of her dorm, etc. So she's living at Cousins with Conrad who is helping her do all the wedding shit. And then Jeremiah finally comes back after his like work, he comes back for the weekend and he does not want to help with the wedding at all, except for planning what the hell he wants to put on YouTube. And if you have someone who is more interested in social media posts about your wedding than the actual wedding, get the fuck away. The second you start putting too much of your relationship on social media, your relationship becomes about social media and that's bad. So red, the reddest of flags, the reddest of flags. Conrad got in a surfing accident and Belly's helping him and she just had her bachelorette party like a day ago and you're feeling this about Con oh, this book is just so shitty i want it to end uh <sighs> guys i'm so tired so they throw a kind of bachelor party conrad's the designated driver he overhears some of the frat boys talking about how Jeremiah was so lucky to hook up with Lacey and Cabo. Conrad, when they get home, pulls Belly aside and is like, I hate to tell you this, but he cheated on you. And she's like, yeah, I know. And he's like, what the fuck? Why are you marrying him then? And she's like, you know, you just don't understand. So I'm leaving. And then he pulls this shit and I'm tired. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, the drama. So Susanna wrote Jeremiah, Conrad, and Belly, and I assume Stephen maybe, letters that they can open on their wedding day because she wasn't going to be there. And I guess Conrad was trying to be nice and gave Jeremiah, who ran away the morning of the wedding day, by the way, um, he just peaced out. Conrad went to go find him. They fought a little bit. And then Conrad was like, here's your letter from mom. Read it. Jeremiah opens it and maybe the envelopes got mixed up i don't know but it was conrad's and susanna apparently said like the only time that she ever got to see conrad in love was when it was with belly and so now jeremiah's like number one i will never fully be your like first choice and only love and number two like I'm not going to tear you guys apart this is bullshit and so now i assume the wedding is off it's done this was so dumb. Um, I'm so shocked. So I'll tell you what happened in a second, but I just wonder like if I had read the books and liked them, I would be so pumped for this TV show because it's so much better, so much better, so much more content, so much more depth. But if I, like myself, had watched the TV show and came to read these books, like what did I read? I still stand by hating all of the characters. They are so immature, so shallow. I'm so angry. I'm shocked that I'm angry. Like I'm, what were these books? And like the writing was not good. So here's what happens. Jeremiah is like, no, we're not getting married because you still love Conrad. Belly opens her letter from Susanna and Susanna's like, I hope you have a lot of adventures. I hope the guy that you married is really nice. So then they go back to school. She studies abroad for a year in Spain, has adventures. And while she's in Spain, Conrad starts handwriting her letters. And at first she doesn't answer them, but then she does. <laughs> 
And then four years later, four years after her almost marriage to his brother, when she's 23 years old, her and Conrad get married. And Jeremiah is there with his arm around a date and he gives her a little wave like it's okay. And that's it. It was just so dumb. It was just so like, they were so immature. I, I can't. So anyway, that is how the series ends. I really wonder how they're going to handle Jeremiah in season three. I think that because they already set him up as kind of a playboy, like in the TV show, that part of him is much more, is mentioned quite a bit more. Like he hooks up with everybody all the time. Like he walks around cousins and he's like, been with them, been with them, been with them. So I can see how the cheating part might, even though he's like such a sweetheart in the show, I feel like he could very easily have just been like, I thought we were broken up, but you know, but I just think it's really interesting that I felt like in the first book, especially Conrad, like I said, gives us nothing. We don't get any details about their dating life. And then in the second book as well, we only really flash back to their breaking up and him being this kind of distant asshole. It's not until the third book that we number one, get any of Conrad's POV or number two, get flashbacks to dates where he actually treats Belly well. Like in the second book, we hear that they have nice long phone calls. I just, for the amount of content we got about Jeremiah, there was so little, like we didn't understand why Belly liked Conrad other than he was just the older boy that was always in her life, you know? Like I just, I'm shocked and so confused and would love to know your thoughts. I honestly don't think I'm going to continue watching the show because I just don't, I feel like this ruined it. So if you, I mean, too late now, um, but if you don't want to ruin the TV show, don't read the books. But um, yeah, I'm, I would love to hear your thoughts. Is the writing style in To All the Boys I Loved Before any different? Like, I just don't <clears throat> see the appeal of it. Like I said, it was so shallow and none of the characters were likable. Belly treats everyone kind of shitty as well. Like everyone treated each other so shittily and I just don't get it. So please let me know your thoughts down below. That was an unexpected. I thought I was just here for the tea. I was just going to know what happened ahead of time. I didn't expect to be this let down and angry. Let me know your thoughts. So anyway, I'm gonna edit this up for you and send it out to the world. But yeah, that was the summer I turned pretty. Mm. <laughs> um, catch you guys later. Bye. <laughs>